suicide would have been an improvement like from what was going on and how I felt at the time because I already felt dead like emotionally and physically people in my life were like against me or they wanted to hurt me things like that I felt like um, it felt like the whole world was like a setup and I was like the main character in this like dramatic scenario I I snuck out of my house at early in the morning, so probably like one or two in the morning. I was on the phone with one of my friends, and she told me something really personal, and um, for some reason it really affected me, and uh, I felt like I had to go and see her, that I had to be with her and just uh, to comfort her. I heard there was like a big kerfuffle, and he, um, yeah, like it was just something was wrong, like I knew something was definitely wrong. Justin had a lot of energy, excessive energy, and I thought he was asleep. I went to use the bathroom, and then I was in there, and I could hear him get up and run out of the house. My parents were literally clinging hold of me as I left the house, and um, yeah, they couldn't restrain me, so I, I was able to get out of their grip, and I, I took off. Uh, when I got there, I think her dad opened the door, and they... It seemed like they were kind of expecting me to show up. I, I walked around the Crescent, I walked around several blocks, I walked down to Lines Park, up to the river, then I got in my vehicle and I drove block after block. So I spent probably over an hour just searching and, um, and wondering and being in touch with my wife and at that point she had got the police involved. Probably 15 minutes after um, I was sitting down with her family in the living room. Um, the police knocked on the door, and um, two officers came in, one male, one female officer, and they said that they wanted to talk to me, so um, I went outside with them, and then they ended up putting me in the back of the police car, and then I remember one of the police officers, he put his knee on my head, um, saying that I was arrested under the Mental Health Act. A week later, after being at the Royal Alex Hospital, um, I, I got to see one of the psychiatrists, mm -hmm. and he diagnosed me with mental illness, bipolar type 1. I don't think he understood what really that meant, like what was happening to him. I don't think of that initial diagnosis he understood what, like, what it meant. Um, I was in a season of depression. Um, the medication really, like, squished my emotions and just kind of masked them, so I, I wasn't able to, like, really express myself or, you know, get kind of that high mood that I was used to having. I thought of the times that I, you know, I fleed when, or I ran from, you know, I thought about the times that I, that I took flight and that I made bad decisions based on my mood or on my thoughts and stuff. I just wanted to do what was best for me, what was best for my family. You know, I'd be helping myself overcome this barrier, this obstacle. And there was a big challenge involved going forward, knowing that there'd be medications involved. So it was kind of a new, a new start. I was definitely experiencing lots of um, messy thoughts and stuff. So, um, but after a while, it died down, and I was able to switch over to like a nutritional program um, called True Hope. It was a good, a good four years yeah. for him and for us, and we, uh, we really felt confident that he was doing well on the program he was on. Um, we saw some symptoms that we hadn't seen for a while and his mood was really elevated and um, he, was, um, he wasn't always making clear sense. I decided not to go to work on Friday. Um, I just felt like I was totally overwhelmed. I felt like things were really falling apart and um, and like it, things were intensifying for me like I felt like um, the spiritual battle going on or the the natural realm was like colliding with the spiritual realm and all this stuff and I felt really on edge so um, and I started talking like this to my friend Virgil I started saying like man like I started just saying kind of crazy stuff and he's like wow you really need to just go and hang out he told me to go to Hinton, so I packed up my stuff um, and took my car and drove in the afternoon to Hinton. I stayed in a hotel room one night, and throughout the night, I just, like, I couldn't sit there, so I used a payphone, and I called my sister. 
I was just trying to figure out like where he was at, like had he slept, had he had any food, where was he staying? Um, and then at one point in the conversation, he just said, Jan, he's like, I'm not coming back home. Those are really the only words that I remember saying to her, um, but it, it scared me too, because I didn't know what that meant at the time. He was, wasn't making sense. He was very confused in his thoughts and in his speech. And he was talking about just getting away. He was talking about changing his identity. And in that moment when I hung up the phone, I chose to continue this downward spiral. I chose to let go and I chose to not give this situation to God, but I, I ended up taking it into my own hands and I said, you know what, I want to see how this plays out. I felt like at the time I wanted to see how far down the rabbit hole really went. I sped down the street of my car and I, I ended up on the main highway and I was probably exceeding the speed limit by like 50 or 60 kilometers. So I would have been going 170 or 180 kilometers an hour. Something happened to my car and I felt like my brakes cut out. I felt the glass hit my face and the airbag hit me and, and then everything just stopped and it was silent. It was a, a very intense time for us, uh, a feeling of helplessness because we were so far away. And as soon as I heard that, I like sat down and I thought, I don't, there's a really good chance we won't see Justin alive again. But I was still awake and I was still, I was still breathing and I was still alive. I was still so high and elated in my mood, I decided to start running. I made it about three and a half to four kilometers before the police started tailing me and um, they were wondering what was going on and then I got really upset and I started yelling at them and then two of the police officers who were behind me um, took out their tasers and they shot me in the back of the head and in the back. We've raised Justin as, as a Christian, and we've always attended church, and we believe in, in reading the Bible and um, just living as Jesus talked about um, in the Bible. And that, that particular day I said, Justin, I want to pray for you, just me and you. Just, I want to pray for you, and I believe I even used the word blessing. I want to bless you. As your father, I want to bless you. And I, I just felt like things were different. I just felt like the whole world was like painted a new shade of like white or like a new shade of just life kind of like there was just a, I experienced like he told me later that it it was a um, a type of a healing or a beginning of a healing for him um, and right there I just felt like a whoosh of like peace he he was overwhelmed with a sense of joy and laughter and he just let him he just let it go I don't know what happened, but I just felt like there was a voice in the back of my head or in my heart that said, like, are you going to run again? Or are you going to let, you know, let me take over and let let me calm you down? And, and I felt like God was just saying, like, you have a choice to make. You can, you know, let these crazy thoughts rule your life. You can let, you know, all these outlandish ideas, you know, take you down a really bad path. Or you can just give in and you can, you know, give in to my peace and to my rest and to my safety. Um, I just came to the realization that, wow, like, I definitely do suffer from mental illness, that bipolar disorder, or what you might call it, is something that I've struggled with, and I came to that conclusion and that end that I do need help, and I do need the support of my family and my friends to, um, you know, to be, to be healthy emotionally and mentally and physically. I chose to get up, I chose to um, keep wandering. I kind of felt like he was turning a corner. He said to me that he wasn't going to let that instinct define his life. So I could see that really clearly in him. A method of recovery for me over the past even two years has been 
writing music and playing music in my room and just uh, writing lyrics. I've been learning lately that music's a tool that I want to use to to bring hope to people, to bring uh, to tell my story in a really tangible way. Everybody has a story worth telling to somebody and that these stories can bring life to people and they can bring hope and they can bring redemption to people. So next time when I break down, when I feel hopeless, when I feel lost or confused, I can be breaking for the right stuff. Next time I'll be breaking for love. Oh my heart, my heart is breaking, oh my heart, my heart is breaking for love, it's breaking for you. Oh my heart, my heart is breaking, oh my heart, my heart is breaking for love, is breaking for you.